Uh, good afternoon. I'm Travis County Judge Andy Brown. Thank you all very much for being here today. Um, I want to thank Dr. Pinkard, our medical examiner, for hosting us here today, and thank Dr. Walks, Integral Care, Austin Travis County EMS, uh, Dr. Abraham, our Travis County Executive for Health and Human Services, Pilar Sanchez, and Communities for Recovery for joining us today. Is that everybody? Um, we're here to share a new finding in the overdose public health crisis in Travis County. Uh, this month, our medical examiner's team, uh, Dr. Pinkert and his team, confirmed the first overdose deaths with xylazine found in them, and he's going to explain more details about that and the numbers. Um, it basically means that it was found in people's systems who died of drug overdoses. It does not ne mean necessarily that they died of that cause. Um, it's important to know this because the tools that we can use to fight opioid overdoses don't always work the same on xylazine the same way, and we're going to have folks here explain that to you. So for example, Narcan uh, does not have the same effect on xylazine that it has on fentanyl, on people with a fentanyl overdose. Um, using Narcan still greatly improves the chances of survival of anyone experiencing an overdose, and so we're going to talk about how it's still important, very important to administer Narcan situation like this. Um, we know in general that drugs in our community are still mixed with fentanyl and that they could be potentially mixed with xylazine and we need to warn people now to save lives. Additionally, Travis County has preliminary data to share about the state of our overdose public health crisis, but first I want to give you a little bit of context of what we're seeing in the state. And remember that often the way that people collect data or report data from city to city in Texas or county to county in Texas can differ. Uh, but in 2022, Harris County had 500 fentanyl-related overdoses. That's a 467% increase from their data in 2018. Similar situation in Dallas County, they had 260 fentanyl-related deaths in 2022. That's more than a 1,000% jump compared to 2018 for them. For Travis County, we had nine fentanyl-related overdose deaths in 2018. In 2022, we had 245. That's more than a 2,000% increase in fentanyl deaths. It's a huge jump, but we've also seen the growth, it seems, between from year to year may be going down. Um, comparing 2022 to 2021, we had a 107% increase in fentanyl-related deaths in Travis County. That's double the number year over year that we had. Based on calculations that the medical examiner will talk a little bit more about, we're expecting that rate to drop slightly. So using the numbers from the first five months of this year, 127 people died from fentanyl-related death in Travis County. If this trend continues through the rest of the year, we could reach roughly 300 people by the end of the year. Last year, 245 people died of fentanyl-related overdose deaths. So it's an increase, but it's a 22% it's a increase instead of a 107% increase is what it could be. Again, that's an extrapolation. Um, overall deaths of overdoses look like if we're using that same kind of extrapolation, we had 417 overdose deaths, including everything, not just fentanyl, in 2022. That was a 35% increase from 308 in 2021. Our medical examiner team expects that there will be about 484 overdo overdose deaths in 2023. So that's a 16% increase um, instead of a 35% increase. So the big picture is the numbers are going up, and that is still terrible, and we need to do more. They're not going up at the same exponential rate that we saw last year is what it seems like right now. Um, but it's a still a terrible reminder about how much work we have left to do in the community. So at Travis County, we're making significant investments to help prevent overdose deaths, and you're going to hear a little bit about that from the team from the City of Austin, Austin Public Health, uh, the paramedics who are working on this. We need more from our state leaders on this. Um, the Texas legislature, Dan Patrick in particular, should have legalized and allowed to le be legalized fentanyl strips during the legislative session, but failed to do so. It's pretty sad that that did not happen. But I'm also very excited that U.S. Senator John Cornyn is leading an effort to legalize fentanyl strips and also test strips that would test for xylazine at the federal level. This is great news. Um, so this is not a partisan issue, and I'm really glad that Senator Cornyn and Governor Abbott have both come out in favor of legalizing fentanyl strips. And I would encourage Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick to maybe communicate more with his colleagues uh, to better understand what it is that they're understanding that he is not understanding on this issue. Earlier this month, the, the Commissioner's Court and I approved $825,000 
of the initial $1.4 million disbursement that we got from the opioid settlement, just the first of many, hopefully, um, towards these efforts. It includes $175,000 to buy more Narcan, $350,000 for peer recovery support with communities for recovery, $300,000 for methadone services or medically assisted treatment, and $35,000 to help with Sharp's collection. Additionally, the commissioners and I voted to earmark $575,000 of general fund for future investments that hopefully will come very soon to help respond to these emerging trends to work to prevent opioid overdoses and deaths in Travis County. Um, we also earmarked another $350,000 to create the first ever Travis County Overdose Emergency Fund. Th that funding is going to build more robust response for emergence, emerging community needs like the xylazine response expand critical infrastructure for organizations engaging in outreach and recovery, and help the county respond more nimbly to emergencies. So um, I'm going to say a little bit in Spanish. Uh, buenos tardes. Soy el juez del condado Andy Brown. Este mes, la oficina del médico forense confirmó la primera sobredosis relacionada con la silacina en el condado de Travis. Uh, la silacina es un poderoso sedante para animales el cual suele ser mezclado con otras sustancias, incluyendo el fentanilo, para aumentar sus efectos. La importancia del descubrimiento de esta droga en el sistema de la persona fallecida es que los medicamentos que normalmente se usan para revertir la sobredosis de opioides no tienen el mismo efecto en la silacina. Es importante Uh, todavía que medicamentos como la Narcan se siguen usando en casos de sobredosis para contrarrestar los efectos de cualquier opioide que se encuentre mezclado en la, con la droga. Hablen con sus seres queridos o gente cercana, las cuales pueden est estar en riesgo de una sobredosis. Debemos difundir esta información para salvar más vidas. Ya hemos perdido muchas personas en esta crisis de salud pública. Le cedo la palabra a, and I don't think, uh, Commissioner Howard, are you ready to go, or do you want to? I'll listen to the doctors. Okay, let's let the doctors go. Um, Dr. Pinker, do you want to come up? And where's the room? I'm sure. Good afternoon. Thank you, Judge Brown. Uh, as the judge mentioned, uh, fentanyl deaths continue to be problem in Travis County. I will review a few of the statistics from 2022, uh, some of which were available at the last press conference we held uh, back in April. Accidental drug deaths more than doubled uh, from 2019 to 2022. Accidental drug deaths involving fentanyl increased more than tenfold in that same time period of three years and doubled from the previous year. Fentanyl went from being involved in 12% of drug deaths in 2019 to 59% of drug deaths in 2022. And in fact, in that year, 2022, all accidental drug deaths in people 20 years old and younger involved fentanyl. It's important to note that in fentanyl deaths, the vast majority, 92%, involved multiple drugs. It is very rare for fentanyl to be involved singly, as it's very rare for for any drug death to be involved just with a single drug. In the last press conference in April, I was asked about xylazine and whether or not we had seen it in any cases here in Travis County. At that time, we had not. And as of uh, earlier this month in August, we, we have. So I wanted to briefly talk about xylazine. Uh, it is a drug known as an alpha-2 agonist. So it is not an opiate uh, like fentanyl is. It's an alpha-2 agonist. It is known colloquially as TRANQ, T-R-A-N-Q. It was initially studied for use in treating high blood pressure, uh, but it was never approved for human use due to very adverse side effects. It is used in the veterinary community and has been since 1972. However, according to the Department of Justice, uh, it is not a federally scheduled drug. In other words, it is not a controlled substance. It causes sedation, analgesia, and euphoria, and in addition to opiate drugs like fentanyl or heroin, it has its own set of, uh, of physical dependency and withdrawal symptoms. It has been reported uh, to, be, to be used recreationally since the early 2000s, uh, beginning in Puerto Rico. It is used now very commonly as an adulterant in both fentanyl and heroin. And
And the, the thinking is that the, the presence of that drug, uh, the effects of xylosine, its duration is longer, and so it's thought to enhance the effect of the fentanyl of heroin that it is part of. It's produced very inexpensively in China, and again, it is not a controlled substance. As of March of this year, uh, xylosine was found to be an adulterant in seized fentanyl in 48 states. Uh, and in fact, in 2021, 90% of the fentanyl uh, seized in Philadelphia contains xylosine. It is important to note, as the judge mentioned, that xylosine is not an opioid, so it is not reversed by Narcan. And in fact, there is not any available agent to reverse the effects of xylosine. It also can cause severe skin ulcerations, uh, regardless of the site of injection or the mode of administration. The White House Office of National Drug Control Policy has declared xylosine, particularly fentanyl adulter uh, adulterated xylosine, as an emerging threat in April of 2023. Uh, we have a top-notch toxicology lab staffed by amazingly tox uh, talented toxicologists, and we have been able to detect xylosine since November of 2000, so nearly three years. And we haven't seen it, as I mentioned, until recently, uh, beginning, of, beginning of August. We've now identified five cases of deaths we were investigating here in Travis County in which silencing was detected. Four of those cases are finalized as drug-related deaths. Uh, it's important to note that all five of those cases also had fentanyl, and all five of them also had several other drugs present as well. Just to name some examples, bromazolam, methamphetamine, cocaine, and metragenine. So in other words, other recreational drugs were present as well. Good morning, my name is Dr. Desmar Walks. I'm the Travis County Austin Health Authority. And I'm here to speak uh, about the public health implications of what we're reporting to you today. There's been a change in the supply of drugs, street drugs, um, and that's why we're here today to talk about the adulterant xylosine, which you've just heard about and um, are learning that is, it is not reversed with naloxone. Um, we had this crisis um, in our county um, that took root in 2018, and it has grown ever since, as you've heard from the data. Um, people have been experiencing pain for over the last three years or so due to the pandemic and to the effects of uh, that uh, loss of jobs, the loss of income, the loss of socialization that's incurred. And in the, in the um, instance where you're dealing with someone on top of that is living with a substance use pro problem, you can see where there is a change in their ability to deal with um, life and um, looking to using medications that are not prescribed to them that have these um, other drugs such as fentanyl and xylosine mixed. Um, we're here today to, I'm here today particularly, to speak to those in our community who are living with substance use disorder um, and ask them to start, if they haven't already done so, to not use by themselves. Um, please go and obtain naloxone from our harm reduction sites, um, from the vending machines that are out in our community from um, sources that you can identify by calling our 988 crisis line or 311 or calling integral care or going to one of our harm reduction partners. Um, with the addition of this new drug that as the medical examiner says is not controlled so it's easily available, we're going to see much more profound overdose um, events um, and they're much harder to treat um, because it's not just the xylosine that's present, but oftentimes fentanyl, which not naloxone does reverse, but also methylphenidate, cocaine, etc. And so I urge anybody who is watching and following what we're doing here today to not use alone if you're using and to take advantage of the community resources that are being made available. 
with, through peer support counseling, through our medically assist, assisted treatment program, which you'll hear about in a few minutes, and um, to not use it on. Thank you. Hi, I'm Phil Owen with Communities for Recovery, and I'm here to talk to you today about what we address in the community, which are recovery support services, and specifically today, speaking to, as Judge Brown had mentioned earlier, regarding some of the Travis County funding that has uh, put, been put in place with the already established opioid epidemic, uh, providing peer support at two site locations. Those community partners are Sunrise Navigation Center and the other one's foundation, uh, Esperanza Community, where we have peer support uh, on those sites available to talk with people. Uh, and when I talk about peer support, I'm talking about people with lived experience, uh, people that have used drugs, may use drugs, um, uh, are currently using drugs, and I really want to encourage that not only as community partners with funding like this that we come together, but also as family members, allies, um, and so forth, come together to support, become, get it more informed. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we've already seen with the established opioid epidemic that Narcan does save lives. We're seeing improvement on that, but we need to normalize the conversations around the use of drugs. Not that stop using drugs is the answer for everybody because that's just not realistic, but that people that are using drugs can use drugs more safely. And not only that, they deserve the respect of a human connection because we know that connection saves lives. And that's what Communities for Recovery does, and that's specifically what we're doing at these sites is providing connection for people that would like to talk to somebody with lived experience and connect to resources in the area to, to help address their uh, goals. Uh, up next, Dr. Abraham, are you willing to say hi? Uh, so Dr. Abraham works with Austin Travis County EMS. In particular, I saw her when I did a ride along with the community health paramedics the other night, and they really do amazing work. So I'm not sure. on how that relates. Yeah, so uh, EMS has certainly seen an increase in the number of overdoses. Um, in the field, we're not able to identify if this is xylazine or these other drugs that have been mentioned. Um, but we are excited about some of the resources that we have. We have a couple paramedics who help with that medication assisted treatment program. So within 24 hours of an overdose, those paramedics will go follow up with the patient who has been resuscitated from their overdose. Uh, they start with a simple question, hey, are you okay? Um, and develop a relationship from there. Um, they get them started on a medication called buprenorphine. It's a, similar to a long-acting narcotic, basically, and helps block the urge for those other setting, it's given by a paramedic, and then we get them connected to other community resources where they can be maintained on a program like that. Um, it's had a very high rate of success. Our program is close to 90% successful in getting patients um, to turn their lives around. Um, they get uh, started on these medication-assisted treatment programs, they get into peer counseling and support, um, like was just discussed, and they go on to lead happy, healthy, productive lives with families and members of society and all that. So uh, that's what EMS is doing to try and assist with this. Thanks everyone for coming today. I appreciate the messages um, from the leaders behind me to folks um, using drugs. And the message I wanna share is to parents and to coaches and to teachers, now is the time to talk to your kids about your concern for their drug use. It's happening all over Travis County. And it's, it's, it's the season, right? Football season is upon us, and we need to have the hard conversations right now. I know it's scary. Lots of us are parents, but there's help out there. You can talk to your school counselors. You can call the city or county public health hotlines. Maybe Dr. Walks can help us with that. But we can't shy away from the hard conversations because the consequences right now are too dire. And so we're going to continue to support harm reduction and to support the professionals who, you know, advise us on what to do. But my, the urgency to me that I feel in my heart is to encourage parents to have the tough conversations. Um, if you want to call me, I'll help you walk through it. Thank you. Yes, we've determined.
detected xylazine in five autopsy cases that we're investigating here at the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office. Four of those cases have been finalized. Uh, and they were certified ultimately as deaths due to drugs, of which xylazine was one. They all also had fentanyl. The fifth case was a very new result that just came out of that recently, so that case has not been finalized yet, although that apparently is suspicious for being drug-related death as well. Um, are you all doing anything to track where these folks may have gotten xylazine? So that would be more of an activity that law enforcement would be doing as opposed to us. We, we are simply investigating the death to determine its cause. The law enforcement agencies involved in those cases would be the ones really trying to track, for example, the, the source of where that was obtained. Was not being used in those five cases to try to help the person in all five cases or anything? Uh, I don't know the details of all five cases. I know that in one, uh, definitely not, as the, the patient was found obviously deceased uh, in their residence. So uh, when we respond to overdoses, we're primarily focused on treating the symptoms. So if they're in cardiac arrest, we're doing CPR on them. If they're not breathing, we're breathing for them. Uh, the medications that we use are just to try and assist with that. Um, so there's not a lot that's been able to change at this point. Uh, they're still focusing on really good CPR um, and breathing for that patient. Um, and that's what we would encourage bystanders to do as well. Uh, like Dr. Wax mentioned, you should still use Narcan on these patients, uh, since there's probably almost certainly still fentanyl and other drugs that would respond to the Narcan. Um, and you should go ahead and start doing CPR. Um, everybody should be trained on CPR. We know that early CPR, early bystander CPR, absolutely saves lives, um, both in overdose cases and other types of cardiac arrest. Right. Uh, just a quick part of the you know, there's been a big, uh, big push in the last site that almost got across the finish line uh, to get testing strips legalized in Texas. Uh, is there a, uh, well, first of all, would testing strips also test for xylazine, or would that be a separate testing strip? And is there a push to get the other out to give a special call for an upcoming special test? Yeah, so the second one first, yeah. I'm pushing for him for whatever that d good that does being the Travis County judge. But yeah, I think public health professionals, Republicans and Democrats, and frankly, Governor Abbott himself have have support this and think that it should come through. I know that the bill that uh, Senator Cornyn is proposing would be test for, allow fit testing strips for both fentanyl and xylazine. And do they automatically do that or is it separate test strips? Separate. Okay, so they're separate physical strips, but the law, if changed the way Senator Cornyn wants it to change, would allow for both. Thank you. It causes sedation, it causes decrease in breathing or for patients to stop breathing. And as mentioned, it isn't reversed by naloxone, so um, that's a problem because it does um, increase the effects of the other drugs that are off, uh, often on board, like fentanyl. So it is still important to use naloxone when you find somebody who you suspect has had an overdose and treat them with it and call EMS and get them to start their CPR, and if you can start CPR, get that started as well in rescue breathing. All right, thank you all. Let us know if you need anything else. I, I did have one, one last thing that just wanted to mention, uh, Mike, sort of to, to the call for the, the state. And I think part of that is, yes, of course, to legalize fentanyl strip, test strips and xylazine test strips, but also to increase funding for medically assisted treatment. I, that is the thing. Dr. Walk sent me a video the other day just talking about the fact that it, if, if you are hooked on one of these drugs, you want that drug so powerfully that it, there's very little else that will help you get to a better place than what Dr. Abraham talked about, getting onto a medically assisted treatment program. And my understanding is that we need more of those in the community. They're not cheap. So locally, we're, we're funding some of them through Travis County. The city's funding some of them. Central Health is funding some. But the people who are sitting on a ton of money right now that, frankly, don't know what to do with it is the state of Texas, and they can make a real difference in this by funding more medically assisted treatment. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I believe the first one was toward the end of May, and the other four were subsequent to that. 